Hello everyone and welcome to a really quick video. I'm going to try and keep this one under five minutes. It's simply here to address some questions that I've been getting. Well, pretty much an avalanche of questions um, through my email inbox, Facebook, everywhere really. Um, now I unboxed this guy. This is my early 2008 MacBook Pro and I've owned this now for, I'm guessing around four months, maybe pushing five, I'm not too sure, but I'm going to go with four months. Um, Simply because my 17 inch MacBook Pro went back to its rightful owners. It was provided by the college for me to carry out a two year level three uh, diploma in music technology. Uh, I kept it for a little bit after the course, but they soon phoned up and wanted it back. So, um, you know, that's how it goes. It was mine for two years and then, yeah, I gave it back. I, did, I wasn't really sad about giving it back because um, I didn't need the power. It was a quad i7, 8 gigs of RAM, 750 gig hard drive. I didn't need any of that stuff on the road. I have a Mac Pro, an 8 core Mac Pro, which is fully capable. And the little bit of video editing I do on the road can be handled by something like this, which is what I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so, getting onto this machine then. This is my early 2008 MacBook Pro. This is the replacement. Uh, for my 17 inch uh, Quad i7 2011 MacBook Pro, the last 17 inch MacBook Pro I ever made, I believe it was. Um, yeah, I borrowed money off my parents to get this and I'm still paying off the debt. Um, I've only got about £100 left on it, I've been paying off about £100 every month, so kind of, you know, they cost around £400, so it kind of makes sense, I've had this for four months or three months or whatever. But anyway, this will be paid off very, very soon, and uh, I needed it urgently, the reason I, I borrowed money to get it urgently was because I had a lot of things going on at the time, I was on the road heavily, and not having a computer with me was just like an impossible task. Um, you know, uh, half of it just for note writing and stuff. Um, you guys have got to remember that, you know, I've got, um, you know, various eyesight conditions and whatnot, and using paper is just pretty much a no-go for me, unfortunately. So I'm extremely lucky um, to live in this generation where I can write up a document and blow it up to size 42, <laughs> you know, on a 15-inch screen. It's, uh, it's, it's very nice. Um, it's convenient, it's handy. But yeah, anyway, get, talking more specifically about the MacBook Pro, uh, this is the early 2008, like I've said a million times, the last 15 inch model before the unibody design. Love this design of computer. It's an absolutely wonderful machine. This is the 2. Uh, gosh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, Intel Core 2 Duo, I believe. Um, it has two gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. We will talk about that extensively in just a second. Um, it has a 200 gigabyte hard drive. We will also talk about that. And it has the NVIDIA GeForce 8600 GT with 256 megs of VRAM. Now, this model, if you have the 2.5 gigahertz, the one above, or the 2.6 gigahertz, you would get 512 megs of dedicated VRAM for the uh, same graphics chip. Um, you, you could also get 7200 RPMs on the higher end models and stuff like that. But yeah, this is the lowest end 2008 model. Um, but, you know, still a very nice machine. It's a MacBook Pro, for crying out loud. It's a, you know, it's a lovely piece of kit. Um, so, let me just talk about the graphics for a second. When I unboxed this machine, um, to put it, you know, fairly lightly, it had a big malfunction. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is just open up the screen. I'm going to move the camera up a little touch, like so. And I'm going to open up the display. And as you saw there, I had that line appear on the display, okay? Um, that is really, really common. It just happens to me. Now, I use a program called SMC Fan Control to keep the fans boosted on this machine at all times. So, as you can see up here, I have the fans running fairly quick and it just keeps my graphics temperatures under control. Okay, so, you know, they're just a little bit off max there, you know, I don't know why they're not even. But yeah, they're just a tiny little bit off max. Um, and the Mac isn't too loud, as you, you may or may not be able to hear it on the camera, I'm not too sure. But yeah, this is my MacBook Pro, you know, the 8600 GT has graphics issues. End of story, it does, that's just how it is. But mine's doing okay, and if it does fail, I'll get it repaired. That's just that's just how it goes. Um, I, I use this machine extremely wisely. I use the SMC fan control app, and once it's booted up, the display works fine. It's only when I wake it up from sleep it has the slight, you know, glimmer. I get the odd bit of graphics tearing, but you know, 
as you can see it's flying around the interface like absolute mad and everything looks great. Um, so as you may or may not be able to tell I am indeed running Mavericks on this system so let's pull up about this Mac. Let's take a look. Uh, version 10.9.2 and of course there's the rest of the specs that I said. Um, yeah, how does it run Mavericks under 2 gigs of RAM? Fairly poorly. Um, you know, things take a little while, let's just see. Let's boot up iTunes, for example. Um, you know, this is a lot to do with the hard drive as well, but it's cramming a lot of stuff into memory at all times. So stuff just takes a while. Now, it's a combination of the hard drive and RAM slowing down this machine, but as you can see, no applications open, and this is how long it's taking to open iTunes, okay? So, you know, it's no big deal or anything like that. Um, it's absolutely fine, but you know, if we then start stacking programs on top of each other, it can get a little intense. Um, but you know, that's, that doesn't mean to say that it's impossible to use. I just need to get some money and um, and buy the RAM for it, really. Um, so graphics doesn't bother me. RAM, I would love to go up to six gig, but I would probably just go up to four gig. Much cheaper much easier to find, uh, you know, the relevant uh, RAM sticks. And yeah, Google is very cool today, by the way, guys. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot easier all around to get two gigs, uh, four gigs of RAM, sorry. I think four gigs will be enough of a boost for me. You know, it's double and, you know, that gives me another two whole gigs to play with. Um, the operating system is pretty happy taking the, you know, the majority of my, uh, my total RAM count. So I have got the funky memory clean application that I uh, load up from time to time. Um, yeah, as you can see, look, it shows you a free memory, 11.28 megabytes. You know, it's complete, complete, it's a complete waste of time. Um, I need more RAM and yeah, this app works great, but I have to do it every 20 minutes or so when I'm using the machine. You just hit clear memory and it starts clearing it and things speed up. You know, they're quick for 10, 15 minutes, and then, you know, depending on what you're doing, it goes down. So, you know, it's no biggie. Um, hard drive-wise, 200 gigs, I believe, this uh, this machine has. Um, if I pull up the About This Mac section, so, you know, obviously it's cleaning its RAM, so the machine has hung a little bit here. I believe it's a 200 gig drive, 5400 RPM, uh, nothing special. Would love to cram an SSD into this system, however, getting the upgraded RAM is more important to me at this moment in time. Um, let's take a look at about this Mac. So yeah, you guys can see kind of what I deal with. Um, if you can get away with running Snow Leopard on these machines, I really would, until you've upgraded your RAM. I think it's going to run fine with an SSD and 4 gigs of RAM. I really think it is, because as far as general power goes, I'll talk about power and how I've discovered power in this machine in a minute. Um, but yeah, as far as general power goes, it's very good. Can't fault it. So more info. We'll take a little look at... Might as well close the browser, give us a little bit more room to play with. So yeah, you know, you guys can see it eventually does stuff. Um, storage. There we go. I have, you know, around 90 gigs free. It's pretty cool. Oh, it's a 250 gig drive. That's cool. Yeah, it's a 250 gig drive. Um, you know, pretty standard stuff for this kind of level of MacBook Pro. Very, very nice. I'd like to replace it with a 250 gig SSD. 250 is fine for me on the road. Uh, I'm not taking the optical drive out and putting a, a hard drive in there as well. Um, I use my optical drive. So yeah, they're the future upgrades. When would I like to have them done by? I would love to have them done by summer. Summer is where stuff starts to get busy for me again and I, I carry the machine around on my back because I'm you know doing various different shows and stuff. You know, I'm calling up scripts and cues. Sometimes um, you know I'm even planning on using Ableton Live this year even more to trigger lighting cues through MIDI and stuff like that. So I need a capable machine that doesn't slow down. So you know I'll get the RAM first. Next time I get you know a decent pay packet and you know I can afford to just spend money on RAM and then uh, I'll get an SSD for this system and I'll make a really fun upgrade video with the SSD. If I get them both at the same time then I'll notice a huge speed upgrade which will be very nice. Now just to wrap up this video then guys I'm going to close up my MacBook Pro. We're going to move the angle down once more. Sorry about this guys I'm using uh, my 
a different tripod today because I've left one uh, somewhere else. But yeah, talking about the power of this machine then, you guys have seen a total of six YouTube videos edited on this MacBook Pro. I have edited them on the road on this MacBook Pro, um, which is actually really crazy come to think of I haven't I've done but most of the G3 videos on here I've done two vlogs on here it's crazy I've done six YouTube videos on here and it's been great as soon as Final Cut Pro 10 is booted up and if nothing else is running and it gets into the flow and everything is imported and the camcorder is unplugged this system is speedy so I simply cannot wait to get um, more RAM so that it can you know do more things at the same time maybe I can have you know, just my email open in the background while I'm while I'm uh, editing a video without too much slowdown. But yeah, this little monster has edited YouTube videos that you guys have seen. Now, things that I love about this Mac, guys, is obviously, you know, it's powerful in that respect for the money. You know, it's much better than you know. I, I'd hate to get any any kind of PC for that price. But also, I love the connectivity. Connectivity is something that these older machines do very, very well. So I've got both revisions of Firewire, I've got DVI right out of the box. It's absolutely fantastic. Of course, Ethernet compared to the new machines, no Ethernet, new, no Firewire. I mean, to be honest, I haven't got Thunderbolt, obviously, you know, this is a 2008 machine, but guys, you know, could I afford Thunderbolt accessories anyway? Do you know what I mean? So what I'm trying to say is, I love this MacBook Pro. I also love the new MacBook Pros, probably equally as much, but, this is the right level for me at the moment. Both of my main Macs are from 2008. They are serving me incredibly well. One's my 8-core Mac Pro, which is obviously a lot quicker, but this is basically the equivalent on the road, you know, of the time. Um, when I had my 17-inch, it was very, very, very quick on the road, but I don't need that power anymore. I just need this one to be a little bit more responsive, so double the RAM and an SSD, and I'm gonna be sorted. As far as predictions for how long I'm gonna be using this as my main portable, well, it's a MacBook Pro. It's a really nice system. It's thinner than my PowerBook. It's thicker than my 17-inch MacBook Pro, but it's nice. It's got everything I need. It's got optical drive. It can support SATA SSD. Um, it runs the latest version of OS X so far. I can see myself using this comfortably as long as it supports the latest versions of OS X for a good two years into the future, hopefully. So, you know, the machine will be... Um, we're talking eight years old when I'm done with it, you know, eight years, if I can use a computer, um, like an eight year old computer and, you know, replace it then, you know, that's, that's a fairly good life cycle for the machine. So yeah, you never know what's going to happen in the future. You know, like I say, you can never predict what's going to happen. So yeah, this is my MacBook Pro. I wanted to give you guys an update, much longer video than I wanted to post, but I was getting so many questions about it. I just wanted everyone to be familiar with what was going on with it. There will be upgrade videos, but as you guys know, I generally don't really make videos about my portable Macs. I don't know why, I'm just much more of a desktop person, but I need portable Macs, um, you know, for portability and on the road stuff. You know, it's a given with what I do. So, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has answered um, some of your questions, hopefully all of your questions. Uh, if not, feel free to post more, and I could always do another video talking more in depth about specific questions that people have about the MacBook Pro. But I think I've covered all of the basic grounds. You know, I run Final Cut Pro 10 on it, I run Mavericks on it, and with some RAM and an SSD, I think it'll be uh, a really nice, comfortable powerhouse to use. I really like it. Nicest keyboard in a portable ever. The original MacBook Pro design like this one and the PowerBooks have the nicest keyboards. The keyboards are stunning. Love the trackpad. Love, 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 love the display. It nails my Dell 2009 W's for uh, color reproduction and stuff like that. It's much brighter than the PowerBook G4. Much, much, much brighter. Um, slightly better resolution as well. Um, just because the display is, you know, more widescreen. But anyway, I'm rambling now, guys, and I'm starting to compare it to the PowerBook, which I haven't owned in years, so, you know, it kind of makes no sense. But I guess it does in a way because it's a similar case design. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. I could go on about these things forever. Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to me rant about my MacBook Pro. I love it to pieces. It's a great right-hand man to carry around in my bag. And to be perfectly honest with you, I wouldn't really swap it for anything. It's a lovely machine. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.